good evening so i have i hope everyone is doing well so today we'll be seeing another concept called object locking okay so this is this is important to understand uh, this concept will use a lot whenever we want to do any database operations okay and we also get like lot of production issues related to this one so let's understand this what is uh, this locking concept and how we use it in our real time applications so the first thing is that like if you read this here so the, i'll attach this link in the video what it is saying it is different from the database locking okay uh, you must have heard this database locking okay i either in your like uh, previous projects or in your, uh, or in your engineering time uh, okay so uh, so that is that uh, like uh, like this locking is different okay so pega have implemented in a different way okay uh, this locking concept so this is purely for pega okay let's first understand that why we need this locking okay so this is basically locking is holding that resources okay or kind of a booking that resources so if i explain in a uh, little detail with so let's have uh, let's the uh, let's have example that you have one case okay uh, one case and uh, your colleague has opened that case and and the same case in pega you want to update okay or you want to perform something okay so if both will submit try to submit at the same time then database contention can happen that which data will get inserted and which one should not okay so to maintain the data integrity okay this concept will be used okay so that the, your colleague will be holding that resources once he will submit that resource case okay or the resource then you can use it okay and also once he'll submit whatever the changes he has made you can see that and based on that you can take an actions so we'll be seeing this all things okay you can see your viewing locking and then viewing lock in activity or flow lock a string so these are the like kind of a all uh, points we will be seeing so the first thing is that basics that a requester can lock an instance lock an open instance if all of them are true so basically here it is explained that uh, to have to take the lock okay of any instance okay uh, the class should have the concrete class so definitely in pega class is related is mapped to a, a database table and we can only have an instance okay um, an uh, instance when we have the concrete class and the second thing is that allow locking should be enabled okay so allow locking is only applicable for the data uh, like data classes for the work classes uh, that is <coughs> sorry i mean we always have to take that lock okay so we cannot avoid that locking so if i show you that work class or that loan request class okay uh, let me show you this work class we don't have that locking tab so here if we go here we don't have okay so that means by default we are like going to have that lock but if i open this database data classes which i have created as employee you can see that we have a locking tab and then we have allow locking okay so if we have enabled that means like if someone is trying to update any instance let's say employee okay we have employee id 1 okay in a database table and if someone is trying to update that employee 1 okay or have done that obj open uh, by handle or obj open okay then the other person cannot update or cannot take a lock okay so we'll see that how we can do that but on a high level uh, this is what that we should we should this criteria should match and the third criteria that you should have access privileges to take that lock okay uh, if you are using sysadmin4 or if user ac if you are using user user access you'll have that by default that access okay what happens anyone when anyone takes that lock okay in pega so that let's understand that concept also so whenever we take an in, lock on any case or anything pega creates an instance in system underscore system underscore locks so what it will do it will insert an item in this one with some details and the details will say that this is the case id or this is the instance okay and this is the instance and this is the person or the operator id who is taking that lock okay and then uh, once that person will submit that or delete that instance okay then that system underscore from system underscore locks that instance will get deleted so let's see that currently what we have okay so if i open here we can see here click here for the system lock view okay so let's see that how many we have currently so we can see that we don't have any instance in this one okay but if i create a case here let me create a case loan request and show you so the moment I'll, I'm creating a case, that means I'm locking this object, okay? And when, like, when the case will be locked, okay? When I'm like trying to perform something, 
okay or when i'm trying to take any local actions then pega will or the system will acquire the lock on this system so the moment acquiring lock means inserting an item into the system underscore locks with this details okay what details so this will be the case id and the operator informations and then also when it will be expired so expired time so few basic details it will, it will get inserted so let's 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 wait for this case to get created so we can see that this case got created now let's see that again click here so we can see that this requester client okay has one lock okay so basically and in this one in this we can see that so this is the detail i was talking this is the handle so this is basically that uh, pj dynas pj dynas key of our case and then honor okay so this is my uh, id okay operator uh, not operator id basically the id which pega generates for each requester so this is the requester id and then when it will be expired and this is the author name is basically the operator name let's understand that what is the expired time so expired time is that when it will expire okay if let's say if i'm not closing this case then when this lock will get expired so by default we have pega have set that to 30 minutes okay uh, and where that setting is there so that settings is there in a database and sorry data system setting so if you come here it's admin then then dynamic system setting and if you search here with the 30 you'll find few okay with that so this one so 30,000 milliseconds so this one is that a time up okay so after so if you see here if i calculate then 608 okay it will expire at 608 so if i see here 540 so exactly we have done it two minutes before so after 30 minutes it will get expired okay so after 30 minutes it will get expired after that what it will happen still this operator okay author will have the soft lock okay currently it is hard lock means no one can modify okay so let me I'll show you okay that how we'll get error also okay after 608 okay then this will move to soft lock after that if any some other persons wants to take a lock on this case they will able to do that okay but before that they cannot okay if they are trying to do that then system will throw an error that the author already has that lock okay so now let me do that okay what it what i'll do i'll close this case or here i'll just cancel this case so when i'll do that so i am moving away from perform mode so then the lock will get released so let's do that okay i did that now go ahead and refresh that let's see that locking details again see that is gone okay so now like so there is two way okay how lock can be released so the lock can be released in two way one is that system like the system or that user is either submitting that request so that means he's committing that request okay or making the change in database and then committing or he's closing that request he doesn't wants to work on this request if i just close the browser so whatever i'm saying okay just to for, for you okay here that entire details is there in like written okay i'm just trying to explain that the same detail so if i close this browser okay after like taking that like let's say the moment if i click on go again i'll take that lock okay so if i just refresh refresh we'll see one more one case here so if i close this browser that doesn't mean that i'll be releasing that lock no so to release that lock either you have to perform on that case or you have to close up the, uh, uh, that case or you have to log off okay because this lock is related with any requester okay so once that requester is log off from the system the lock will get released so that is how it works let's see what else we have okay testing for logs we'll, we'll see that okay and how we can debug releasing logs so let's see that okay i have already logged in with another user so from here what i'll do i'll create a case okay so this is another user so from here i'll create a case now this is in log okay this uh, so who is holding this lock so user one is holding this lock okay so if i go here and refresh one second it should show two locks now okay so we have one lock here and one lock is here so let me go and show you so we'll see again click here for system to view that lock oh why it is showing only one let me show that oh, no it should show that lock let me create another case some some issue it should there should be two or three like because this is uh, this is 
uh, this lock uh, this case is locked by the other user let me refresh this ideally it should show oh not sure maybe it's uh, showing only my locks okay so there is another place so here clicks so click for the system to lock view so basically it's just showing my lock okay if you want to see the other users lock also so from where you can see so the one way you can see here you can come to system underscore locks and view that okay so that here so system underscore locks click here and then you can view that locks another way usually which we follow most of the time developer follows is we'll go here okay applications and then applications tools and then no, one second case management tools and my work work admin sorry so you can see that case management tools work admin and you want to see my logs or all logs so for now we just want to see all logs so i'll click all logs so we can see that here it's just showing two so if i'm clicking here you can see that though the operator name is showing same because i have not updated the operator okay but it's a different operator so you can see the requester is different okay on it is different okay so this is hold by this 1011 is hold by like this id and 1103 is hold by this one okay so now if i try to take that lock of uh, lock on 1103 i should get an error so let's see that how we can test that okay so that is where here it has it has been explained that how we can test that okay locking things so if i come here and try to see the instances of this loan request and then here we can see 1103 so let's see if i'll try to take that lock see what we are getting an error that l01103 is currently being modified by author and may not be edited simultaneously so this is what we are seeing that the lock is held by another user so we cannot update okay and we are also seeing that there is an entry in the system underscore locks which i explained that whenever any user is taking okay uh, that uh, uh, then a system pega will add that uh, and and a row in that system underscore locks now if i go here and cancel this case okay then we will be able to take that action so now let me try again to take that lock okay so refresh this again because i have closed it from the other place now if i try to take an action see i'm able to take that lock so this is this is this we saw based on the case but what if we if you're trying to do some background processing or if you're trying to update a case through activity so let's see that how we do from the activity so let's just visit this page also what we learned okay so we long learned viewing logs okay in activity or flow we'll be seeing we learned a standard report a standard report how we can see uh, either we can see from the system underscore logs or we can see configure case management tools work admin and logs so either we can see my logs or uh, all logs okay that we saw and where it is uh, storing it is storing in sys underscore uh, psq okay so let me show you that class so if I come here system underscore lock and then if you see the definitions of this class and do test connectivity we can see that so because sometimes if you're a junior you'll, you'll might get these questions in interview also that where pega stores that locking details okay so you have to answer that class is system underscore locks and the database table name is ps is underscore locks so this is that details where the locking things will get stored so that we we show okay and then we'll see this uh, activity how we can uh, use activity for uh, handling that lock so we'll see the the, the another things we, here it has been mentioned is that lock string so lock strings is basically the same case id okay so here if you see in the lock this is the lock string so this is basically it's nothing it's the pz ins key of the case okay so let me show you i'll just show you that case and then we'll see that pz ins key is of this case and it will match so here in clipboard if you go to py walk page you'll see that uh, pj rhinus key so here if i come if you come here and then here if you search pj dynasty key then it will be the same see so this is the details which we which we are seeing here see so this is the lock string okay so if someone is asking what is lock string so you can see that the case id so here it's the it's the lock id okay i mean if you're using the the case then that the, the um, then the lock string is like that but what if we are using 
some other things like database table or anything like like that is not a case we're just using as a database tables okay so in that case what it will happen whatever we define whatever be the pgdynamics key of that table of, of that class that will become on that log string so let's say for employee we have this class right so here if i come so data so here employee and let's see what is that our uh, definitions of this class so here we can see this class and then the label so whatever with the value that will become that the lock string okay so okay let's see that how we can do in that and and i also explain that soft lock so soft lock is that okay after 30 minutes okay uh, the lock will get released or to, uh, a lock and uh, that lock will move from the hard lock to soft lock okay and after that the other person or like other person can take that lock or you can take the lock through the activity okay i mean so that is what it has been explained here that after 30 minutes it, it's not like that that lock will get released but the lock will move from the hard to soft that means you can now another person or another activity or that another piece of code can take that lock okay that releasing lock also explained that either you are making a commit okay like either you are submitting your case or you are like uh, cancelling cancelling means like you are closing that case okay in that scenario the lock will get released or you are make you are doing a log up but if you close the browser it won't uh, uh, release the lock okay and then for debugging we'll see that how we'll see that locking okay so let's let's create activity okay and with that we'll we'll learn that important things that in uh, when we do obj open or obj open by handle how we we do that locking things or how we handle that so what we'll do i'll quickly write activity so i'll go to technical activity and just and here I'm writing activity. So in your applications, if you need activity for this kind of operations, okay, you just you should write one uh, activity only in base class. For that, I've already created a video. Okay, so don't assume that I'm writing activity here. Then you can always for OBJ open, you should always write activity. Okay, so let's see those methods. Okay, so here if I just do OBJ open. Okay. Let me add another method also, which open by handle. So here you can see that we have that lock. Okay, so that means when we are opening an item, okay, opening a case or opening an item from the database, okay, we are bringing on the clipboard. You want to hold a lock. Okay, so whenever you want to hold a lock, then most of the time you should check this release on commit because eventually you want to release that lock. Okay, because you don't want to hold that lock for forever okay so that is where like lock the item if you want to update and then release commit okay if you just want to view the data okay if you just like in some of the scenario we just want to bring the data and we don't want to make any changes to the database in that scenario you don't have to take that lock okay so uh, like use this carefully if you want to update the data whatever you bring then only take that lock same thing is there here also okay that if you like lock and then release on uh, lock and commit and here you can give that lock info page so if your lock is successfully then you'll see the message on this one if not then you'll see that the failure message or whatever okay so that here it has been explained so let's see that okay what we'll do will i'll create another case here or i'll just take that uh, lock on this case 1103 and now i'll try to do a obj open okay by lock so I'll just comment this one for now and let's see if our OBJ open is success. Okay, so in this one, I'll pass that class. So we'll pass that the same work class and here I'll pass the value and I want to open with PYID. So PYID is the case ID and then here I'll give the class work class. So basically I want to open an instance of work. Okay, with the case ID and then i'm saying that i want to lock also but now we already have a lock on uh, like uh, who is holding that lock so this operator is holding that lock okay who is user now i'm trying to take that lock with another user so let's see if we are able to do that if we are able to take that lock so let me run that and trace as well See, 
we got an error and let's see in the tracer so in the tracer we can see that it failed and here it's saying cannot obtain a lock on instance okay this one as requester already has that lock so let's see that if this requester has that lock okay so how we can see that so again here we can come to config and then case management tools work admin and we can see all locks and this one we can click here and we can search yes this operator has that lock or this basically this requester has that lock so we cannot take that lock okay now uh, so here in the message it's a saying but some some of the times we want to see that okay when case is releasing that lock and when lock is getting acquired so for that only for debugging purpose okay two things we can do is that one is that pega logger is there so maybe in some other classes we'll learn that how we can enable that logger and the second thing is that we can enable locking in our database uh, sorry in the tracer so how we can enable the locking in the tracer is we have to go to settings okay somehow settings is not working what let me open the tracer here and then in now it's setting is working so here we have an options to enable locking see here so most of the time you should enable this locking by default it is not enabled because it will help you a lot okay because what happens when you um, release that lock then you will, will not be able to update the data or, or many things happen okay so it, like there are like a lot of scenario on the locking we get so many issues uh, like in productions as well because of this locking so now if i enable so we'll see that how it will work okay so let me run that again so i'll just pause this tracer and try to run this activity so basically we will try to take that lock again but yeah we won't be able to do that because we have that the already that other operator is holding that lock so see here we can see that that same failure message we are trying to do that always a lock and then it is failing okay but we are not able to see that that locking details okay lock we are not able to see that so let me do that what i'll do I'll clean, I'll close this one, I'll clean up the pressure and pause and from here I'll release that lock. So how will release that lock? I just can click on cancel, the request came in review mode. So then the lock got released. Now here I'll, what I'll do, again I'll run this. Okay, so this time we should be able to take that lock. So see, it's a success, so showing success masses. Okay, and in the tracer we can see that, see here, we have enabled that lock. So here it is saying acquired lock okay so we 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 are able to take that lock now if you want to make an update we'll be able to do that and we can commit in the database so let's try to update the py level okay and then we'll try to release that lock lock as well so here i'll just do a property sheet and on which page we want to open this so i'll just say test page on test page we want to open this or instead of test page i should say case page because it is a case related data so here just I'll mention this case space here case page case page in this one py I'll just try to update the py level py level and then I'll say test now here we have taken a lock okay so after log we have to like uh, we have to release and commit so basically then we have to do a commit okay so we can do commit in a many way but like mostly we should use out of the box activity so for that we can call call commit with error handling so this is out of the box activity which does the commit commit with error handling so we can just do like this also and we should get that activity commit with error handling okay so now i'll again run this activity and we'll see that when we are acquiring that lock and when the lock is getting released so we ran that okay so let's search that by lock 
so here you can see that clearly lock already on okay because uh, we have taken in that last run when we ran that okay but you can see the masses okay if you already have that locked system is saying that already locked on if you are not if you're acquiring for the first time then we are using this uh, already uh, like on lock and then here after commit you can see that after the commit got executed and then we release that lock also if you don't so that is where this step is required okay that release that lock once you are done so release on commit so here we are doing a commit then the lock is getting released so this is how we handle in activity okay and uh, so there is another method also so let's say that obj open we show okay and then similar way we can do for obj open by handle also sometimes we use opj refresh as well so obj refresh and lock what basically it does is it refreshes that case space or that that instance space okay and then takes that lock that lock so these are the few methods through which we can take a lock uh, take a lock and also we have few out of the box activity which does the same work okay if you want to take that lock you, if you don't want to use this method so let's say you want to acquire that lock in data in in data transform then we have that functions okay uh we have functions here i have seen that is page lock you can check that okay if that lock is already held or not okay so we have uh, 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 this methods but let's say you want to take check that okay uh like or uh, you want to take a lock so then out of the box activity you can use and directly call in data transform you don't need activity so if i come here and a technical activity then here you can search with work lock you'll find uh, work lock we, you'll find some activity Sorry, lock. just search with lock and then you can just mention that class work so see here we have uh, why that require one second this few activity acquire work object so acquire work object does the same thing it takes that lock say here acquire lock object so if you this is like kind of api activity open work object smash primary page and remove that so it, it this activity also takes that lock and then we have this activity work lock which will take that lock let me sh show you that there is another activity so there are like few out of the box activity which uh, does this work okay which, which which will take that lock for you acquire work object yeah so this is a, the activity same activity okay so if you if you're using this activity then it will take that lock and then um, or you can use work lock as well okay or you can use that those methods always open by handle or always open or always refresh to take that lock so these are the few ways through which we can acquire that lock so I, I hope I covered this page. Okay, most of the details on object locking. Locking on some other day we'll we'll hand uh, like we'll talk about the case locking. Okay, because in case locking we have a two types of locking: default locking and then optimistic locking. Or you can say that one user locking and then allow multiple users. Uh, one user is means only one person can hold uh, like that lock at a time. And allow multiple users means that two person can like open the case in perform mode, but they can not submit so if i'm submitting the other pa other persons will get a message to rephrase that case and view so we'll see in some other sessions but if you understand this concept it will help you a lot okay so that that the the one which i'm explaining that case type okay and uh, the case locking you'll see here in settings okay and if you come here in locking you'll see that options so by default time value is 30 minutes here as well and then here that locking strategies allow one user and allow multiple user so uh, like uh, on a high level if i have to explain allow one users means that the one which we, sh we showed okay that only one person can uh, hold that lock so if i'm taking that lock okay this user is uh, see here it's trying to take that lock that means uh, unable to do that because here like i have already took that lock with this activity okay so that is like kind of a one person okay and the other one is allow multiple users both users can open that so let me uh, show you quickly okay so here we did that okay allow multiple users so he in this case both the users can open the case but if one is submitting then the other person um, has to refresh that case okay he'll see the message that this case has been already updated and you need to uh, refresh so what i'll do i'll quickly create a case from here loan request and then uh, i'm in a perform mode now what i'll do i'll open that same case here zero four 
and try to perform that game. See, we both are able to open. So see, this is also in perform mode, here also in perform mode. But if I submit from here, then if I go there, I'll get a message. Okay, so let me do that. Okay. I'll just update the details, edit details. So in that way also what it will happen, I'll, I'm just trying to update this case, okay? So I did that, now I come here and try to submit this case. Let's see, so see, uh, this case was updated by an author, the other user, okay? So that is where like we cannot submit. So and now after refresh, so we, if we refresh, then what it will do, it will go to database system, it will bring the latest data, whatever that other users have updated, and then I'm able to submit this case. So if I'll do, I'll be able to do it. So that is the definitions of allow multiple users, but there are something more also, if you're using a child case, then uh, how we should handle that locking so that, that those things will come in later sessions. So that is it for today's sessions, uh, okay? So I'll just quickly recap what we learned. So we just learned that what is object locking means uh, how Pega store this locking details. So whenever anyone is taking that locks, how we release that locks, that also we learn, okay? Uh, how we take that locks, we learn, and how we can see this locking informations, okay? My locks and the other users locks, that also we show, and also we see, we saw that how we can debug, okay? So in traces, we can enable that uh, settings, and in the loggers, we can use this, uh, this class for that uh, uh, logging more details on that log so that is it for today's sessions uh, let me know if you f if if you need more help on this one okay we can have another session so thank you thank you very much have a good day